not totally sure how I'm supposed to come up here after that. <clears throat> Thanks, Chris. Uh, man, there is freedom. It can happen. There's people in this room that have gotten free. God is bigger than your worst sin. He's, he's bigger than your worst habit. And sometimes we got to let people in. we got to let people know what's going on. Man, thank you, Chris. That was huge. We have an AA meeting that meets every Friday right here. If you need to get help, there's help available, and there's no shame in it. Asking for help is not a shame issue, is it, right? Some of us have asked for help. It's not a shame issue. It's, it's, a, it's a hope issue. And there is hope, and there is freedom. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. We, we're going to wrap up this breakthrough series, and, and uh, you know, I won't be able to have this Lego set anymore. I don't know. This, is going to, this series is going to end, and I'm so sad that I, I, got to, I got to somehow repurpose this to something else. But uh, we've been talking about breakthroughs, and God is bigger than your worst sin and your worst habit. And God wants to break down these strongholds because they hold us back from everything that God wants for us. That free life that you want, that abundant life that Jesus talked about, that's available. And there's power. There's power available. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I grew up here in this area, and I remember as a kid always being obsessed with off-road vehicles, motorcycles. Some of you know my obsession with motorcycles. Uh, and, and when I was a kid, these things called three-wheelers were okay. Now they've been outlawed or whatever, and I know that they're kind of dangerous because they're kind of weird to ride. They're weird, but when I was a kid, that's what we had, and we would go to Sand Lake every weekend, and there was something about... A boy getting on a three-wheeler with no mom or dad around, that just spoke to me. I could be out there, and who needs a helmet, right? That was, that was back in the day. Some of the young people listening to this like, what? You do anything without a helmet? Yes. I even skied without a helmet, okay? Anyway. But we would, uh, these, these moments where I just felt like I was free. I felt like, you know, there was nobody over me telling me what to do. And I remember, I still do, and some of you probably have the same memories that I have of that moment at age 16 when you got in that vehicle, you got behind the wheel, and you left mom and dad in the rear view, and you felt good. You know what I mean? Can I get a witness? There's something about it, like this freedom. You feel like, ah, you know, I was doing it legally. You know, I, Lord knows how many times I did not do that, that sort of thing legally, but... That moment where I could do it legal and I could ride right past a police officer and just give him a big wave because I was legal. There was something about that, that freedom. It was, it was, I know we don't like to use the, the word magical around church circle, but it felt magical when I, could, when I could do that. And we love freedom. The thing is, you look around, I mean, we're Americans. We, we love our freedom. I think sometimes freedom's a little funky because freedom also means we have way too many choices. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't go in to Safeway looking for a tube of toothpaste. No, it's not that simple. You can't just get a tube of toothpaste. You have 300 different choices of toothpaste. You know, the reality is they're probably all the same ingredients, but the box looks different. So we think in our kind of goofed up thinking, well, that one must be better because that's a different color of green than the one next to it. Freedom, sometimes we get that a little confused. Like it's, it's almost too much. You ever heard of that idea of, of uh, uh, like choice fatigue? Anybody ever have that choice fatigue? Like just give me one, right? I know, I know that, that we're, we're not in a, you know, a different sort of government, but I feel like sometimes I need one type of bread. I, well, give me milk. Okay, milk is an interesting thing. We have a hundred times different choices of milk. You, you, you have oat milk now. I grew up on a farm. There ain't no milk in oat, oats, you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what horses eat. Now we have oat milk. We have so many choices, freedom. Like for, for some reason, our freedoms have, have gotten a little crazy sometimes. But, but it doesn't take long in this life before you realize there are things that threaten our freedom. There are. There are things that fret, threaten your freedom, things that threaten my freedom. And, and it, I mean, it could be something as simple, and this is a universal thing, right? I mean, disease threatens our freedom. Uh, addiction, like Chris talked about, that affects our freedom. Sure, you can have a drink. Sure, you can have 15 drinks. Freedom, no, now it becomes slavery. 
We, we, we know that there are things that interrupt our freedom, economic disasters. You can't tell me in 2009, right, that people weren't thinking, wow, everything that I trusted is gone. I knew people that were starting their retirement in 2008 and 2009 and watched their bank accounts just like plummet. Where is our security? See, things threaten our freedom all the time. Freedom is one of the things that compels many of us to say yes to Jesus. Because he talked about freedom. Uh, freedom from the empty trappings of religion. Uh, freedom from trying to just please God somehow, even though we realize how sinful we are. Uh, some of us are drawn to Christianity because of freedom. But once we say yes to Jesus, we realize that there are still threats to our freedom. And that's what this series has been about, these threats to our freedom. You see, Satan doesn't want us to live free. No, no, no. We have an enemy, folks. And he doesn't want us to live free. He wants us to be enslaved. He wants us to be unable to say no to whatever that thing is in our lives. He would rather us be in shackles. And the reality is that when we said yes to Jesus, something broke free. And we got to start believing it. Something broke free. You don't have to say yes anymore to whatever that stronghold is trying to speak to you. This is a game changer. But many of us, who even many of us who say yes to Jesus, we're still living as if the chains were still connected. But they're not. Jesus came to break us free. It threatens our freedom. And the reality is we are still living, even those of us who said yes to Jesus, some of you haven't, but if you had said yes to Jesus, we are still living in a war zone. And we have an enemy. And he would prefer that you'd be stuck, enslaved. And, and he'd prefer that you'd be stuck behind a fortress, something blocking you from everything God wants for your life. Stuck in financial ruin and loss and despair and sickness. He would rather you stay there in the war zone. But in Christ, we have another choice. We have been freed. Uh, some of you might have read this book that was written many years ago by C.S. Lewis called The Screwtape Letters. Who's read that book? All right now, I realize it's a fictional book, but it's basically like a, an older demon talking to a younger demon about how to mess up humans. So if you've never read it, it's it's pretty good. It's a short read. I realize it's fiction, but there's some kind of truth to that. Where the demon is talking to the younger demon, trying to help him understand the best ways to trip up us humans. And did you know there's lots of ways to trip up us humans? <laughs> there's a lot of ways. Uh, usually it's not the ways we think of. But listen to what he said. This is, this is uh, the older demon, Screw Tape. It's an interesting name. Talking to his Padawan, younger guy named... Wormwood. I don't know where they got these names, but here we go. And this is one of those conversations, and I'll just read it a little bit and then talk about it. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall with regard to the devils. One is to disbelieve they even exist. The other is to believe too much and to become excessive about them. Uh, and they themselves are, are equally pleased. We're, we're pleased with both errors. We can let these humans either believe that these demons don't exist, or we can have them obsess about them to where they see a demon behind everything. Either way, it's to our delight, Wormwood, because whether they're a materialist or they're into magic, we don't care. We just want them off their game. We have an enemy who wants us off our game, who wants us stuck in slavery, believing crazy things about the world. This is what Satan would, would, would want us to have. The fight is real. The struggle is real. Many of us who have been in this battle for a while know it. It is a struggle and it's real. And Jesus offers a different way to be human. We say that a lot around here, but he offers a different way to be human. And he offers hope and freedom. And today, we're concluding our series of breakthroughs. But look, God is interested in whatever that stronghold you've identified the last several weeks. He is interested in breaking that thing down 
so that you can have freedom. You can have that life that he's always wanted for you, that abundant life. I'm Pastor Ben. Glad you joined us today. Will that be online? Welcome. We see you. Or in person, we gather like this on the first day of the week. Why? Because about 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth was born in a miraculous way, lived a perfect life, but went to his death on a Roman cross. But he didn't stay there. On the third day, he rose again. And that tomb was empty. And he offers hope and freedom and a new way to be human and a new way to live free of strongholds. That's why we celebrate. That's why we gather on Sunday. So why don't we stop for a minute, pray, and then we'll get into our last message today on Breakthrough, which is called Living Free. Let's pray. Father, you are so good to us. You're mighty and powerful. And you've, you've told us, you've said it. You've broken us free from every stronghold, every slavery. Father, help us to believe you, to bring you in onto every area that we struggle with so that we can live that life that you've called us to live, both now and not yet. Father, we pray for your power to demolish strongholds once and for all. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the New Testament writings, we find that the early church was not surprised by this spiritual battle. They were very aware of this spiritual battle. In fact, We see that over and over in the New Testament writings. In fact, Paul, we've said this before, Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 kind of tells us, hey, we got to walk through life with armor on. We we have the armor. We have to have a breastplate of righteousness. We got to have shield of faith, right? You remember that in Ephesians chapter 6? There was a spiritual reality that the early church totally understood. We in modern culture tend to poo-poo that. We're so advanced. We don't need that. We got science. Science tells us everything. Science has almost become a god to some degree for some of us. We're, we're, but even scientists won't even say for certain on almost anything. They're like, well, we're not sure. We have the data still out there. But for whatever reason in Western culture, we have just elevated some, some of these things to, to godlike status. And the early church understood, no, wait, there's something else going on that we can't totally see, but there's a reality. There is an enemy out there. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 12, what does it say? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. The early church, and we would do well to agree with them, that there is a spiritual battle going on. We can't always see it. Some of you had to face a spiritual battle this week. Some of you had to to wrestle with thoughts coming at you. Some of us had to wrestle with addictions that keep, keep hitting the door. Keep asking, is now the time? What did Chris say? Every day, right? Well, it's just one drink. This is what happens. We are in a spiritual battle all the time. And we need to keep the armor on. We are in a spiritual battle. But those of us in Christ... We have a new reality. In Colossians chapter 1, this is another writing of Paul. We read Ephesians here a few moments ago. Also Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 and a little bit into chapter 2. This is what we read as a reality for those of us who said yes to Jesus. Jesus has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us. We get a transfer. Notice. New train transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. We have a new king. We're transferred to a new kingdom. That's a big deal. Transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son. You, you were dead. Listen to this. You were in that old kingdom. You were dead in your sins, trespasses, the uncircumcision of your flesh. God made alive together with him. So we were dead But God made alive together in Christ, having forgiven us of all of our trespasses and sins by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. To the cross. Nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. In him. What are we saying here? In Christ, if you said yes to Jesus, some stuff has been nailed to the cross. It's gone. You were dead, 
but you've been transferred to a new train. You're now on the, the living train. And that's a good thing. You have been transferred. You are, look, look, if you said yes to Jesus, this is something that I know might seem kind of elementary and some of you are like shaking your head, bless Ben's heart. I know what that means, by the way. I live in the South. It's not always a good thing. Bless Ben's heart. He's now realizing there's a freedom thing in Jesus. Way, way to go. Look, you've been made alive. You were de death and alive. Those are very different states of being. Don't we know this? You've been to enough funerals. I've been to way too many. Death and life are very, very different things. You have been freed from slavery. You, you have died to that way of life. You are now new in Christ. You've been made alive. Death, life, different. Right? You're like, yes, man, we got that part. Do you realize what that means? <clears throat> the shackles, the handcuffs have been broken. You no longer have to say yes to any, whatever that stronghold is. Now, many of us still say yes because we haven't quite believed it. You have been broken of that. You're free. The chains are off of you. Think about that. If you are sitting in prison with chains on you, and your chains have been broken. The doors are open. Why would you stay in the cell? Why? You wouldn't, would you? And you're like, then, well, that's easy. because I, Then I would know that I was in the cell. And No, we do this all the time. With whatever it is, your stronghold is. You have been broken. You don't have to sit at that, at that poker machine anymore. You don't have to take that second or fourth or eighth drink. You don't have to. You don't have to keep clicking on websites you shouldn't be clicking on. You don't have to. You have been freed from it. You died. To, like, when you die, you're, you're done. Like, they don't even want you to pay your mortgage anymore because you're dead. But we don't live like it, do we? The chains have been broken. In Christ, we claim the freedom, and we sit in the cell. Why do we do this? You have been set free. It's unlocked. The chains are gone. Why don't we live this? You has, your status has been forever changed. If you said yes to Jesus, it's been forever changed to enslaved to free. Do you hear that? It's so big. But we don't live like that. We're still sitting in the cell. Why do we do this to ourselves? Jesus said, for freedom I have set you free. We don't have to live in slavery anymore. Your status has changed. Romans 6.22, what does it say? But you are now free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. And here's why that's so different. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and results in eternal life. Now you are in doing the things that bring life, not death anymore. You have been freed now you do the things that are, are, are bringing life, life-giving. You've been set free to flourish and to thrive and to be fruitful. We're set free to live free. Galatians 5.1, listen to this. For freedom, Christ has set us free. And he continues, stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery, whether that be empty religion or whatever that stronghold is. Now, I know this is a big thing. And I'm not downplaying the difficulty of strongholds. You know how hard it is not to take a drink? Everybody's doing it. You know how hard it is to sit there? Nobody else is watching while you're on your computer. Nobody else is around. I mean, am I, am I being too honest right now? So easy just one click, it's just one more drink, what does it matter? We know it matters because it leads us down roads we don't intend to go. And what did we say a couple weeks ago? Disobedience in one area always bleeds. It bleeds into other areas. It does it every time. I don't know why, because we're dumb humans. And I put myself in that category. Jesus said, for freedom I've set you free. Why would you submit again? Just picture this. You've been freed, but now you're like, nope, put him back on. Put him back on. 
Oh, yoke of slavery? No, I want that back. Why would we do that? That's the language Paul uses. Why? We've been freed. Why would we ever submit again to a yoke of slavery? Yep, I'll just put that back on. That is crazy talk. Paul said, don't do it. We can embrace a new way to be human. And that means we have the freedom to, to be flourishing. Paul, Paul writes later in that same chapter about setting us free. He says, look, the fruit of the Spirit is everything that we want in life. It's love, joy. Don't you want joy? Peace. Don't you want peace in a crazy country that we're living in right now? Don't you want peace? Don't you want a return to talking with respect to each other? Don't you want that? Paul's saying this is the life that we are freed to live. Love, joy, peace, you know these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, the one I always forget, gentleness, and self-control. That's the kind of life we want. That's the kind of life we're, we're aiming for. We want these things. And those who belong to Christ, listen to this, have crucified the flesh. All of those things... That, that, that hurt us, crucified the strongholds with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. That's not the way to be human. That's not the Jesus way. The way of Jesus, love, joy, peace, that's flourishing. That's producing fruit. That's what we always want. And yet... Day in and day out, we'd submit again to the yoke of slavery. Why would we do that? Jesus has set us free. In Christ, you already have the breakthrough is my point. We've been talking about it in this series. Let's just say it. In Christ, you already have the breakthrough. Have you, have you taken it? Have you said yes to the breakthrough? You already have it. Jesus took it all. It's all nailed to the cross. Empty religion, trying to please God by doing all this. He already loves you. You were born loved. You already won. You won the breakthrough. Jesus does that. By faith, you got the breakthrough. Are you going to live it? Are you going to take it? Are you going to say, yes, I want that? Jesus frees us from all strongholds for good. And we got to start believing that. We do. We got to start believing it, right? That's, that's nothing new. I'm not saying nothing, <laughs> nothing new here. Jesus has already broken it for you. Will you take him up on it? Will you take him up on his offer? For freedom, he has set us free. Christ followers, we live this out. We're keeping our eyes open. If you're following, following Jesus, the way to stay away from those strongholds is to keep our eyes open, be sober-minded so we can pray. We're watching out for the enemy. And this is all just passages from the New Testament. But Christ followers, we're not timid. We're bold in love and discipline. We, we embrace discipline. We realize sometimes we got to say no to ourselves. That's okay. That's self-control. Confident in our overcomer status. We have overcome in Christ. We are overcomers. We are led by the Spirit. We are suited up in the gear. We don't take the gear off for Saturday. Right? We keep the gear on. Because those, those enemy arrows are coming at us. So we keep the gear on. We're aware and we're mindful of the escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, my favorite passage. No temptation has overtaken you, which is not common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. But when you are tempted, He does what? Provides the escape. Are you looking for the escape? Are you walking away from it? Are you shutting it off? Are you leaving the bar? He provides an escape so you can stand up under. This is the way Christ's followers stay away from strongholds. We are daily, like I said last time, we are, in, we are confessing people. So when we screw up, we own it. We confess. We surrender again to Jesus. We pick up our cross daily and follow him. And we're accountable. You know, all these years I've been following Jesus, I still have to remain accountable. People can still ask me, what's going on? What are you doing? What are you looking at? Okay. I can be accountable. It's okay. You can be accountable. Look, the rules don't not apply to you because you're just that spiritual. Oh, you're a pastor, so it doesn't apply to you. Yeah, it does. It applies so much to me. 
It applies to you too. Don't even get, don't say, oh, it's on Ben, but it's not on you. It is on you. You are a follower of Jesus. You are a child of the King. He has set you free. So we live with our eyes open. We keep the, the, the gear on. And if you're not a Christ follower, oh, all this is accessible right now to you. Say yes by faith in Jesus. You can have this. You can have freedom from strongholds. You don't have to say yes to sin any longer. Many of us in this room have felt the freedom of saying no to that because we can now by the power of the Holy Spirit. You admit it. Look, admit your strongholds, right? I'm wrapping this thing up. I'm parking the plane on this whole series. Name them. Name your strongholds. We have talked about so many and we got more to talk about, but name your strongholds. And once you name them, you can own them and get some help. <clears throat> Bring someone in. Many in this room have had to do that and it's been life-giving. Bring them in. It's hard Look, justifying the little sins sometimes adds to the bigger sins. It's just the way it works. And those little sins, those little mistakes can add up and become strongholds. And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. So bring someone in. These are important. You can have breakthrough from strongholds. Why? Because Jesus already did it for you. He's already did it. So now you can, you can say, yes, I want it. So start with being honest, confessing that. Embrace surrender, repentance. This is how we live Live with accountability, right? We keep saying these things, but it's good to repeat them. James 5.16, Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. Bring someone in. You know what? There's people in this room that are ready to hear your stronghold and love you and pray for you. Not to shame you or to downplay, but to help. Right? We're supposed to help each other on this stuff. It's hard. Decisions today determine tomorrow, right? Don't they? Decisions today determine tomorrow. Imagine this being the year that God breaks that stronghold for you. I want to do something different. I want to end this with a prayer, but I want you to pray with me. I want to pray through some, some strongholds and some breakthroughs. And maybe some of these will be really relevant to you, but would you, would you mind doing this? Even online, would you just bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment, and I want to close us in prayer, and I want to pray through some of these realities that are true for you now. We are free from all strongholds in Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for loving us more than we could possibly imagine. And I pray that today, for many of us, we would embrace forgiveness instead of bitterness. Father, that we would, we would choose to surrender to Jesus and not to control everything. Father, I pray that you'd help us to choose contentment over the idols of greed and consumerism, materialism. Father, grant us hope over despair. Father, help us to be grateful people instead of jealous and envying all the time. Father, help us to choose purity over sexual brokenness. Help us to, to, to find our security in your son Jesus and not in anxiety and insecurity. Father, help us trust in your care instead of living in fear. And God, may you do immeasurably more than any of us can ask or imagine according to your power. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen.